I can't stop talking about today's artist. I'm not somebody who's like the biggest fan of Western landscapes or animal portraits, but I can't shut up about his stuff. And I think that says a lot. Welcome to the fifth episode of Best Art on Earth, where I find all the best art that's happening right now on our planet and bring it to you. And how do you know it's the best? Because I said. But also, I'm going to prove it to you with the art fundamentals. I'm going to show you through the art fundamentals why I'm so in love with his work. Today's artist is Jeff Weir, an ex-lumberjack turned oil painter in the last few years. If you're into bears, elk, buffalo, Yellowstone, Western art, this is like the guy who embodies all those things. My personal favorite of his work is this elk one. The, the blues and greens against the elk are so gorgeous. But as much as I love that painting, I think this one is a much better representation of Jeff's art. So I'm going to throw it on the iPad and explain to you why all of Jeff's art just pops off the canvas. I can guarantee if you walk into a house or a gallery with one of Jeff's paintings, you're not going to miss it. And the reason is that everything we're going to talk about today boils down to emphasis and basically creating the ultimate focal point right here. So I'm going to throw up a video of how Jeff starts every one of his paintings and he basically starts it with value. He's watering down his oil paints with varnish as far as I can tell and he's just blocking in the color and the composition. Basically he's laying out the piece of the darks to the lights. We're actually lucky enough to see what Jeff's painting is here because he posted an early version of this. Once he gets his gray tones or his brown tones in, he basically just grabs huge amounts of paint and just starts layering it on top, which is what gives it this very rustic, strong brush stroke look. The cool part is by starting with that brown value every time, um, he automatically is gonna have harmony in his painting because everywhere that that backing comes through on the painting, you see, and it actually kind of pulls the whole piece together. You have a unifying color throughout the whole piece. Even in the sky, he's got brown. He also uses value for the emphasis here. He starts with dark, medium, light, and then very light, right in the spot where he wants you to look. So he actually has this flow of dark to lights right here. Now there is a second flow in this piece with color that he does a very similar thing. Let's pull up the color chart. He starts with these reds and these oranges to cooler purples here, gray purples in the back. And then he transitions into basically blue green. So you're moving from a warm color to a medium color to a cold color. So we have a flow chart of from going to warm, medium to cold. When you have warms versus colds, it will create an emphasis. And that's what he's done here. But there's also a third flow with texture. If you look down here at this part of the painting, this third of the painting, they're all really big, light, watered down brush strokes. There's not a lot of harshness to any of the strokes yet. If you look at this second third of the painting, you're starting to see some texture and some harsher brush strokes, a little bit in here. And when you get to this emphasis right here, the very tight, deliberate strokes. So you go from soft, medium, to harsh brush strokes with the texture. And by doing this, he's left a lot of what's called negative space. If everything in this painting was as tight as this brushwork is here, it wouldn't have such a strong emphasis. But by leaving this blank space, it lets you enjoy the details. And finally, a couple things about composition. In photography and art, they always say that the best artwork has its focal points on the thirds in one of these four intersections. And if you notice, he landed right on top of one. He also balances this painting very, very well. With all of this bear right here, it could have made the painting feel very heavy to one side. But by putting this nose and this emphasis over on this side of the painting, it actually balances this painting back out to where it feels stable and doesn't feel like it's leaning to one side. You can follow Jeff here at his social media, and it's not just for the art. He's also got a really good sense of humor. So go follow him. And if you want a piece of art from Jeff, good luck because I've seen him sell out all of his paintings three or four times in the last year. Thanks, Jeff, for letting us check out your awesome work, and I'll see you guys with some more cool art next week. Oh, and if you have a favorite artist that you want me to check out, put them in the comments below. I want to expand the artists that I'm looking at. Let me know who's making cool art in the world. Please. Thanks.